It's taking a while. Okay, it's taking a while. I can see you. Good to know. <laughs> ah, you can see also the... In Paris you see? Ah, okay. Perfect. Seems to be a, a shift, time shift. Yeah. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Okay, um, we are going to start this session. Uh, my name is um, Alba German. I am from Cordoba, Argentina. Um, we are going to hear now the presentation by Agustin Tancat. He will talk about building a cartography web application with PG TileServe and PG FeatureServe. He is an engineer in, at, at Auslandias in 2016 and uh, historically a full stack developer. So uh, welcome, Austin. Thank you, uh, Alba. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Uh, thank you. So indeed, uh, I'm going to speak about PG feature serve and PG tile serve and, and how they allow us to build simpler JIS uh, architecture. Um, so yeah, historically, when we wanted to do a web uh, JS application, uh, we had real, uh, not real choices. Uh, maps were served as images. So on the server side, we have, um, uh, for example, a QG server, a map server, or a geo server, and uh, they act as a rendering engine, and uh, they do all the heavy lifting of transforming vector data into raster images. And these rasters would get sent uh, to the front, and uh, then we would use uh, like open layers leaflet to display these images, and eventually uh, an applicative backend for other needs. Um, then we uh, people started to use uh, vector tiles. So instead of um, uh, putting the data and generating the PNG and uh, serve them, uh, they were sending. Uh, we are now sending vector data directly to the to the web client. So we can speak about Mapbox. Uh, it's not the first, but uh, certainly one that uh, help uh, uh, making this mainstream. And so uh, instead of rendering uh, things server side, we do it uh, client side. Uh, client side rendering. Uh, so a quick uh, quick note about this has many advantages. So it's a lot easier to change the style. Uh, on the fly, for example, for hover animation, or you can uh, also uh, uh, have a, like a interface to change the style. You don't need to do a get feature info to get basic information about what feature because they are embedded in the tile uh, or in the vector data. And uh, of course, something that uh, is not well explored at the moment, but I really much like to see it one day, it's an accessibility feature for map, map display like a high contrast theme for for a base map, for example. And um, so, yeah, also uh, one of the advantages of um, uh, vector data, vector tile, is that you don't need um, that much infrastructure to, to set them up because actually the backend just serves the vector data directly. Uh, so you don't need a rendering engine. Uh, so the question is, uh, do we still need uh, QGIS uh, uh, geo map server uh, for this. Um, well, they do more than just uh, rendering uh, PNG, for example. Uh, they also HTTP mappers. They provide you a compatibility layer for OGC protocol, and also they connect to data sources. So uh, that's actually the idea under these two projects I'm going to talk about. Uh, when you think about it, Pogis can put uh, vector data and GeoJSON. Front clients like open layers uh, knows very well how to read them. So uh, actually we don't uh, need a lot of things in between and uh, we could have a simpler, a simpler solution in between. So in the past, uh, uh, yeah, I used to do it with a Python Flask, a simple homemade server, for example. Um, but I think we were missing like a, a nice well-designed solution, prod ready to, and also uh, with a standard conformance for this. 
and I think we now have this uh, this uh, this project with PGTAL serve and uh, PG Feature serve. Okay, so let's present a bit the common points between uh, both servers. So they both written in Go. They both present a REST API to um, to web clients, and uh, a choice I've been made is is to connect only to PostJS. Um, so I think, well, the good thing about PostGIS is that it can output MVT tiles and GeoJSON the vector format directly. So we uh, this project, this project uh, leverages that. And to get started, you just need to configure the DB connection. And uh, voila, you, here you go. You can start serving data. Both project can serve tables, views, and also functions. And uh, this is, I think, a really interesting feature to be able to call functions from a, a SQL function. So I'll present it a bit later. So for PG tile serve, uh, it serves actually the XYZ tile system protocol. So pretty standard and pretty simple too. And the format of each tile is a mapbox vector tile. And for example, if you want to, to serve a, uh, maschema.myTable, you can just uh, use this URL. And yeah, it's a pretty uh, standard uh, XYZ uh, URL. So the Gwanel IT for PG tile serve is, uh, is a tile, XYZ tile. Uh, on, the other, uh, on the other hand, PG feature serve uses the OGC API features protocol, so the new OGC protocol, and the format is GeoJSON. And you, could, you can also have a JSON format for non-geographic data. Um, so PG feature serve uh, don't, don't, doesn't work with style, uh, but you have you have more advanced features, uh, filters property, filters uh, possibilities. So you can filters on B boxes and uh, on properties too. Uh, so for example, the second example would be uh, serving a cities table and a filtering by continent and the country. And you have also feature like ordering, setting limits on number of results, paging, and uh, limiting what properties are returned, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a uh, yeah COGC the features API because actually it's uh, it's following the standard. So something really nice with these two projects is uh, is that they, they uh, yeah developers cared a lot about um, putting some nice format for metadata. So they are presented in both in the two ways. So in JSON uh, to be able to be consumed elsewhere or in web format for example, uh, HTML web page. And it includes a preview. So for example, for PG tile serve, this is a, a home page, a metadata page, the home page of the metadata. And uh, so it displays a summary of all the relations and functions it has found in the in your database. So for example, here, I don't have any table layers, but I do have some function layers. And what is really nice is that uh, PG uh, tile serve and feature serve are able to display the comments, the SQL comment you have on your objects. So you can document your function like that. And, they are, and really, you can create really easily um, an API web page uh, with the documentation. PG Feature Serve has a similar um, page, and also it presents a Swagger API for uh, yeah an, uh, with an OP open API specification. So if you know Swagger, uh, it's really uh, well you you would appreciate uh, as I do. So it's really nice way of being able to see the parameters of the application uh, of each uh, web routes and also be able to to test them. So here is a screenshot of the, of the preview of PG Feature Serve. So um, here's a table of cities in a, in a part of in a part of France, and so you can also uh, change parameters here and uh, do the query again. And also, if you click on one feature, you have the the on the top right the, the metadata tables with the with information of this feature. So really, that's a little detail that uh, for me matters a lot. And uh, it makes using these two servers uh, a breeze and a real pleasure. So it saves a lot of time and energy to have all these little uh, niceties uh, with us. Just one side note for PG tile serve. Uh, I do encounter uh, some bugs in the preview. So if nothing, if you try it and nothing is displayed for you, just try with QGIS first before uh, thinking that the, that your yeah, the configuration is broken, for example. 
So it that didn't happen a lot and it was on kind of corner cases. So chances are you won't even see this bug. Okay, so let's move on the, for me, the most interesting part of these two servers, uh, which is the ability to call functions and to define custom uh, endpoints with functions. So maybe the best way to see an example, um, here is a really simple one uh, I'm using to debug and benchmark uh, front applications. So this really simple functions uh, just display the tiles, the, the, the XYZ tiles the, uh, on my application. So to be able to be picked by PG tile serve, the function must have this signature. So ZX, ZXY as a parameters, I need to return by TR. And uh, actually the byte here, you generate it with the POSIS function ST as MVT. So I found this example interesting because when you think about it, there's no real data, but you're still generating uh, XYZ uh, layer uh, just by generating the data at each, uh, teach, at each query. So it really opens up a lot of possibilities. Here is a screenshot of this layer actually. So, and because here I have um, selected also ZXY, ZXY uh, in my return value. Uh, they are embedded in the tile as metadata of uh, the feature. So that's why I, I can uh, I can see them if I uh, identify the feature. And you can use it to to choose which properties you you embed. So in a similar way, um, here are uh, an example of function for PG feature serve. So this is a function we actually did yesterday during the workshop about PG tile serve and PG feature serve. Uh, it just uh, from a click, a point, and a radius gives you the feature that intersect this circle uh, cut at the circle. So I use a little GIF um, showing this. And so PG feature serve can uh, use a lot more function style that, uh, than PG tile serve. So you don't have any uh, XYZ parameter, of course, because the PG feature self doesn't know about the tile, but you can choose yourself parameters. For example, here, I have a click uh, longitude and a click latitude and a radius. And the return value should be a table or a set of record. And uh, in the table, you embed a geometry and some properties that will get embedded as a, a properties of the JSON. All right, so um, let's talk about other possible functions IDs. So for example, uh, yeah, you could uh, imagine to set up uh, a function that will use PostgreSQL full text search on some properties. So this would allow you to have fuzzy searching in your application and search in, on, I don't know, a name and a description and search some features about uh, with this and then display, display them in, in, in your front application. So yeah, so the function capability is really useful for all the so search features, filtering features, and uh, when you need custom behavior. Also, you can do some um, uh, geographic and geometric uh, modifications. For example, you don't you can uh, calculate centers and uh, display them instead of the the geometry the feature geometry, or I don't know in scrap circles you can do some aggregation too. So for example. Um, use project capabilities to calculate blocks in cities and display the blocks instead of, um, of, of the buildings, for example, of the parcels. And the uh, other idea that uh, I want to test, um, it's if you have uh, set up uh, like a log table and or versioning system in your database, uh, you can uh, set up, create a function that will uh, just get you the feature state at a particular time uh, or a revision. Also, I'm, I'm use, often using the function to uh, be able to switch uh, back and forth, forth uh, uh, cache. For example, when my data set is too big and I cannot serve it directly because on low Z values, uh, it will just uh, try to read all the table. Then I uh, implement a cache with a simplification and then I can query this cache uh, uh, with the function and, uh, and the function will just uh, do a switch for it. So really the, the only limit is your imagination for this and uh, it's really flexible. So for example, let's talk about this, uh, the use case I was just uh, referring to. So 
for a project, I had a, I had a big data set, big point cloud data set. So already 2 billion points and much more was planned. <clears throat> and so for this, we uh, created a cache uh, <clears throat> and here is the structure of the cache. So it's just a simple table with the Z, X, Y, uh, the Z, X, Y, sorry, um, columns and a patch. And a patch is just a group of points and it's just all the points for the, for the current tile. And in this patch, we use a subset of the total points, uh, just enough to have a good visualization without uh, hindering too much performances. <clears throat> So here is the next part of the function. So I won't show you everything, but you will recognize the signature. So Z, X, Y as parameters over there and uh, by TR as return value. And then uh, the interesting part is, uh, is the if at the beginning of the function, if Z is um, above 17, which was an, um, a value uh, that was uh, relevant for my use case, <clears throat> we just call another function which actually we read the real data set. And if, um, if Z is below that, then we will just uh, select data from the cache by filtering by uh, the tile coordinates. So it's actually uh, quite simple. The difficult part is to build that cache, but uh, from the point of view of PG tile server, it's transparent. So here's a little GIF about uh, this application uh, seen in QGIS. So the, in production, it's a web interface, it's an open layers interface, but for testing, QJS is, uh, is quite handy. So when we zoom, we, we read more and more uh, points more uh, by, uh, by unit of space. And, and at the end, at the last level of zoom, we are actually querying the, the real data set, the real table. And the colors here represent depth. They are actually depth measurement uh, in a French port. Okay, so um, let's talk a bit about pros and cons of, of the, these solutions. Um, so really, personally, I really, liked, uh, really like these solutions. I find them really simple. There's nearly nothing between your DB and, uh, and your web, uh, web client. And uh, as uh, I, we use Pogis a lot at uh, Oslandia, it's, uh, it's really nice for us. It's really easy to use and deploy. They are just executable, really light executable, so you can deploy uh, any way you want. Uh, with function, it's really flexible, so you can implement custom behavior. And uh, also, the, what is really important for me for production is the uh, overall quality of the software. And uh, uh, I have I've been really, really uh, amazed by the stability and uh, all the little niceties, the time that has been made for to, to care for details. So we have really well cutted corner, so that uh, corner, so that's really well. That's really nice. Also, a big advantage is for deployment. It's really easy to deploy new endpoints. So the only thing you need to do is just to create an object, a table or a view, and then grant uh, privileges to the user PG tile server or PG feature service connecting with, and then uh, you have it. And uh, also, it's easy to change code. If you need to update your function, uh, you just leverage the ability for PostgreSQL to hot update your code. You don't need to restart any server. You just uh, do a create or update function and uh, and you have it. So in, in Java or Python, you, you would uh, necessarily need to um, to restart uh, your, your server. Okay, so uh, there are some limitations. So I don't mean this in the negative way. It's more like, uh, as I've uh, written, simplicity comes with choice. And uh, so this project have a focus and they keep their focus and they, they don't uh, try to do other things. But it means that uh, you as a, a web uh, GIS uh, architect, architect or, or developer, you need to, to um, add more binging blocks to your application to have these features. So you don't really have authentication support. Uh, you can spawn several instances of, uh, of these servers each connecting with the different users to implement some sort of uh, uh, access control, but it's really basic and it doesn't scale. And for other needs, you might still need a backend server, for example, for workflows, sending mails, to have a real web applications, 
uh, and uh, more generally to have uh, more side effects than just uh, data. And you may still need raster layers, of course, for like uh, imagery uh, layers. <clears throat> so yeah, th this project does uh, one thing well, and uh, that's why it's easy to deploy, but you need to integrate them in the broader um, JS architecture. Uh, and I'm done. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, we have some uh, questions in the chat, in the venue list. Yes. Um, Chris Marks asks for a link of the talk. Maybe you can share some uh, link. Yes, okay, I will put it on the, I, I'm not sure, I think they are not published yet, so, but I okay. can, um, I can publish it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, also, Martin uh, Davis was uh, talking with Hans Ruter that uh, because uh, she was telling that there is a problem uh, with the validations uh, of PJ Future Surf with OGC API specs. All right. So uh, they were talking about this. I don't know if you have some comment or want to join in the chat. Uh not really. Um, I didn't know there were validation with uh, uh, issue with validation, but I'm sure that uh, that uh, this is something that can be solved uh, uh, quickly. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I think there is uh, no other questions for now. Ah, okay, I have I have like, the questions. Sorry, in the queue. Uh, there is. Uh, thank you for your presentation with PG Tile Surf. How long will it take to produce deliver PBF vector tiles from Post GIS server uh, if the source is a huge table view? And it, it is good enough for web mapping if the source is too big. Do you have any experiences? Yes. Um, so that's kind of the the last example I have shown. Uh, if the source is too big, what you need to to see is that uh, if you query the low z values, so one, two, three, or I don't know, um, well, the query will actually try to read your 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 whole data set, the whole table, to generate the tile. So somehow you need to to tell PG tile self to use uh, like a, a degraded version of your data. Because actually, in my use case, for example, uh, in my in my table, I have like several billion points. But if I I am I'm looking at the whole country, for example, I, well, the several billion points will take this space on the screen, and it's useless to draw as many points. So you need to prepare a cache or some sort some form of of cache um, with just a subset of the data. So for points, it's easy to remove a subset of the points. You just remove one point of a 10, I don't know, or more than that. For buildings, it's a bit more complicated. There are several way of um, of simplifying the data. You can simplify each polygon, or you can keep only the biggest polygon, for example, in low z values. And uh, and then, once you have your data and the cache for some z for some value of z, uh, you can just use a, yeah a function plug digital serve in a function, and the function will just uh, choose. Uh, depending on what tile you want, you would choose to either go to the to the um, uh, to the cache or go to or go to uh, to the real data. So let me maybe try to find it again. Um, so the function is here, and actually you can see it that that I have implemented a really simple uh, logic for the better greater than 17 i'm just uh, using the real values so you don't see the function but that's what the function is doing and for uh, values uh, lower than 17 i'm just converting the converting the data that are in the cache so the cache is this table actually yes okay great thank you for that great answer there is a very voted question uh, is how do you style your data via tile serve? Uh, well, that's, I'd say you don't. <laughs> you do mm -hmm. it uh, front, uh, in a front uh, in a front application in a web application. 
Um, maybe there's a way to embed a default style, but uh, I'm not sure that PG Tile Self gives you a disability. But uh, yeah, I'd say I, I really say you don't. You just PG Tile Self is there to to save the data, and then all the presentation stuff should go in your front application. Okay, great. Um, another question is uh, how many points were collected, shipped to the QGIS client in the marine data set? Um, you mean uh, served? Uh, because, okay, so in the data set, we had like 2 billion points. Uh, when you look at, uh, when you query data, I can't know exactly how many points are served. So, yeah, maybe the question is about how many points QJS can handle. It's that I, I don't really know. Actually, I'm more focused when, you know, when you, you, you when you, when I do that, I just try to get uh, good performances uh, while keeping good visual effects. And then after that, the exact number of points that I have, I'm serving, uh, it's not really uh, my main focus. If it's speedy enough, it means that I'm not serving uh, too many points. If it looks good visually, it means that I'm serving enough points. So that's a sweet spot to find. Okay, thank you. Another question is, uh, am I correct in assuming that the vector tiles created by PG TileServe can only come from a single table? So tile cannot contain different geometry types? Uh, you are actually incorrect <laughs> because, uh, but yeah, if you, if you plug a table, yes, the, the, it will come from only one, uh, one sources, but if you plug a view, you can mix some data from other tables. And if you plug a function, of course you do exactly what you want. So, but, uh, I haven't actually tested. So if the underlying question is, uh, can you embed several layers in the same tile? This is something that, uh, I haven't really tested. So theoretically speaking, it should be the case because the PostGIS function supports this use case. Uh, you have to have a front application that supports it as well. But actually, I see no reason why it shouldn't be possible. But you need to use views or functions. OK, we have uh, two minutes for uh, last questions. Um, is there anything you can show on creating, managing caches for PJ TileServe? Example, how much to simplify, though I am guessing that's more a question that is going to depend on the complexity of your data. Uh, yes, uh, actually, yeah, it depends really on the, it depends on the, on the type of your data. So, uh, well, I have not, not really much to show you uh, apart from this example today, but um, the conclusion I have now, which can change, <laughs> Uh, for other projects, if for points, for points that are, it's, it works quite well to just uh, take like one point every end point. That's actually what works best. Uh, I have tried several other things, but uh, that's actually what works best. Here, it's not exactly what I'm doing actually. So I'm doing that, but I'm also skewing a bit the logic for very low density because otherwise it's, it was just too empty. Uh, for Building data, uh, just don't try to simplify buildings, to use ST simplify on it, for example, because uh, building already has a low amount of vertex vertices usually. So you will end up with only triangles and only saving like uh, uh, one vert vertice over, over, over two. Um, so for buildings, what works best is to calculate the length or um, a value that represents the, 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 the size of the building. Uh, for example, the, the bounding diagonal uh, works quite well. And then you just take the buildings that are uh, bigger than a certain amount for a certain Z value. And for complex geometry, uh, ST Simplify uh, works uh, well. For example, uh, some people were, were using uh, PG Self to serve um, Actually, they were serving brain scan of a mouse, of mice. So no, it wasn't geographic data, but it was um, uh, a polygonal, uh, for, well, it was a geometry. And the geometry has a lot of vertices. And then using SC Simplify on it uh, works great. Uh, 